they're trying to make you the next victim to what they are. Yeah, I'll do that. I want the truth to be and all new date on Tuesday, 8 7 Central. We are back with NBC News in depth here tonight. That's Detecting nice. autism early and a new test for parents that is designed to do just that. This test applies to children as young as a year old, which is important for making sure those who need us tonight here is NBC News Chief Science Correspondent Robert Brazil. No, 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 Well, I'm celebrating my 78th birthday, and by the time you boys see this, Granny will already be in heaven, but I did want to tell you a few things after seeing if y'all play around the house there. It wasn't too many years ago, it seemed like I was about your age. There's a verse I'd like to start off with. It says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil day draweth nigh. That was written by the wisest man that ever lived. I spent all of my life growing up in 1910 Madison. We didn't move around a whole lot. We was, I was the last of nine children. And I saw you boys play and I thought about some of the things that I did. My earliest recollection, I had a sister by the name of Maud that died when I was real young. And I really don't remember too much about her. The only thing I recall is one day she brought Dorothy, my sister, a little bell. And I was so excited over seeing Dorothy at that bell, I said, Maud, I'd like to have a bell. And she leaned over and patted me on the head and said, Maud, we'll bring you a bell. <laughs> it's amazing things like that stand out in my mind. But I never remember anything else about my sister because I was real young when she passed away. Now, I went to grammar school at Ottawa School and had some friends. One of them was Richard Cooper, no, it was Burl Hughes. We would run and play together and do all the things that all boys do. We lived on the street, like I say, 1910 Madison, and it stayed light all the time. They had street lights so we could play, kick the can, hide and go seek until Mother would call us in at night to go to bed. I went to Ottawa School, as I mentioned. I was on the safety council. Everyone in Mrs. Strolley's class was on the safety council. All the boys were. That was the sixth grade, and everybody on the sixth grade, I remember I was, my corner was down at Union in Barksdale, and that's when I held the flag out for the rest of them to come across. Not only was I on the safety council, but we belonged, in the class, we belonged to the Audubon Society. Once a month, we'd get a picture of a different little bird and all the things that was about the life of the bird. Now Richard and I, we enjoyed things that boys usually do and he got a BB gun one time and we spent the afternoon shooting English sparrows and the little girl that was in our class happened to see us and she reported to Mrs. Strolley that we were shooting English sparrows and it so enraged her that she said, you boys don't need to belong to the Audubon Society so she kicked us out of the Audubon Society, big deal 
but it was a big deal to us back then. We would spend our summers going somewhere with Lisbeth and Hugh, Dick Burford, and Kathleen, the rest of them would go. I remember one trip we made over to Hardy, Arkansas, and we would take just enough food for every meal. They did not have refrigeration, and so Mother and Elizabeth would fix just enough food for us boys to have something to eat. Now, we were always hungry, running during the day, and it seemed like we was living on just about starvation rations, which we really were not. But one day, Outside of the little cabin we were in, there was a picnic table. And Hugh said, Bob, let's go out there and eat our lunch. And I said, no, I'm going to stay in here. So he carried his outside and set out the picnic table. And the people that we had rented from, or Elizabeth had rented from, had some hogs and so also some hound dogs. The hogs came around the table, and Hugh got up to drive the hogs away. And when he did, a big old lank lanky hound dog jumped up on the table and was eating out of his plate. And by the time he got back, a lot of his food was gone. Now, I thought it was funny until Mother said, we don't have to take some of your food and some of Dorothy's food and some of the rest of the food and feed Hugh. And so it wasn't so funny after all. That was our trip to Hardy, Arkansas. We also went up to Bartlett. Elizabeth lived at Bartlett. And then she moved to Pickwick. It seemed like she was always moving different places, but it gave us boys a place to play. Living up at Pickwick, the ground was very rocky and hard. You could hardly dig in it. And Elizabeth had a mule and two horses and a cow and the things that they have in the country. And one day the mule died. Out in the field it died. And Tarbert, that's when my brother-in-law, Hugh's daddy, said, I will pay you boys to bury that mule. But well, we got picks and shovels and things and tried to dig into the ground and we spent a long time trying to dig in the ground. We never could, so we got the idea that we would cremate the mule, which was quite an undertaking. We finally managed to cremate the mule, but it took us three days of burning that fire day and night to finally cremate a mule. And so we did things that boys usually do. I bought my first bicycle with my own money. Club and I would cut grass. We'd get 25 cents a yard to cut grass, and that was not with a power mower. That was with one of those running mowers, and we would use an old pair of mother's scissors to edge a yard. So you see, we <clears throat> made a lot of money at 25 cents a yard, but I saved up my money and bought my first used bicycle for either three or four dollars, and so I bought my own bicycle. When I was 12 years old, Pearl Harbor was bombed. That was in December the 7th, 1941. And so we had to make money as boys to do something when the war was on. You could not get medals, and all the laundries needed coat hangers. And right across the street from where we lived, there was Lockett Cleaners. And Mr. Lockett would pay one cent a piece for coat hangers. So we'd go around from door to door, knock on the door, a lady come to the door and say, lady, do you have any coat hangers you don't need? One or two or uh, any amount would help us out. And we'd get coat hangers time up at 25 to a bundle and four bundles we'd tie together and go across the street and get a dollar for a hundred coat hangers. Now that doesn't seem like much money now, but it was spending money for us back then because we collected coat hangers. When I was in junior high, Clover was in high school, over Tech High School, and right after lunch, I had study hall, and after study hall, <clears throat> we would go to gym, and so really after lunch, there was not too much at junior high going on, so every time at the Malco Theater downtown, was about once a month, they would change film. Clubbert would say, meet me over Tech High when you get off, when you go to lunch, and we'd go to downtown and go to the Malco Theater. Of course, we never let Mother know that and uh, we'd always get home about the time school was out. These are some of the things that boys would do. Clubbert was drafted into the Navy and he left. And just prior to that, Clubbert had bought him a brand new bicycle. He had paid $49 for it. It had everything on it. Had front wheel brakes, had knee action, big balloon tires. And I mean, it was a beautiful thing. And Clubbert told me, he said, I'm gonna let you ride my bicycle while I'm in the Navy. And boy, I was really happy to have a brand new bicycle. But you know, all the things that I remember as a boy growing up, 
I thought about Will, thought about CJ and Austin, thought how fast life goes about. But one thing that I remember more than anything else that stands out in my mind, with all the family that my mother had every Sunday, she would get us ready and would take us to Sunday school in church. But more important than just taking us, I remember as I could close my eyes and look back and remember, I had a mother that would pray for me, that we would find Christ as our own personal Savior, and that was the greatest heritage that any boy can have as a praying mother and a praying dad. I sometimes almost think I can feel my mother's hand as she had laid on my head and prayed for me. And boys, those are the things that will stay with you all through life. A lot of things we do that we may not be proud of. Some things we remember that are good memories. But there's one thing about a memory. We can either have good memories or bad memories. And that's why I quoted that scripture that's found in the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes where it says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasures in them. That's the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes, but that chapter also closes with a great reminder where it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. In other words, this is the bottom line. When everything is added up and put together, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Your granddad is gone now by the time you see this as a young man. But one thing I want to leave with you that you'll always remember is seek God with all your heart because life at its longest is very short. Job said, It is a vapor that appeareth in the morning and is soon God. And Will and C.J. and Austin, you will meet God. And granted his prayer for you is that you'll be ready to meet him.